Joining us for this week's Your Health segment is Dr. Rafael Cires Drouet, Assistant Professor of Medicine at the University of Maryland School of Medicine and Vascular Medicine Physician at the University of Maryland Medical Center. Doctor, thank you for being with us. Oh, thank you, Jeff. We want to focus on deep vein thrombosis, which is a, a potentially life-threatening condition. Yes, it is. It is, and it's, you know, the, sometimes you can have your, you can have your DVT, we call DVT deep vein thrombosis. Uh, you can have in your legs, uh, but sometimes that can travel to your lungs, and that is life-threatening. I mentioned at the beginning of the program that it can be associated with traveling long distances. You think about airplanes, but cars also? Yeah, cars also has been associated with deep vein thrombosis, especially if you're gonna take a long trip. We're talking uh, usually more than four hours. Uh, then is when your risk start increasing. Is it always the legs? Uh, most of the time are the legs, but also you can have blood clots in the arms. You can have blood clots in the brain and other parts of the body, sometimes the renal arteries, you know. But well, what causes it? Well, blood clots uh, is caused because an imbalance between uh, two substances that we have in our bodies. You, we have procoagulants and anticoagulants, natural. But when we break that balance, we develop a blood clot. And we break the balance uh, mechanically or, or in terms of chemistry? We have several risk factors. Let's say if somebody has cancer, that increase your risk to have a blood clot. Obesity increase the risk of having a blood clot. Age increase the risk of having a blood clot. There are some people that has uh, inherited problems that increase the risk of having blood clots. Travel also increase the risk. So um, say it's a younger, healthy person mm -hmm. on a very long airplane ride who doesn't get up, doesn't exercise, um, are, are they susceptible? Well, they are at risk because of the, of the long trip, uh, but if that person, let's say, is taking uh, contraception pills or is pregnant, you know, or if has uh, some inherited problems, can increase the risk of having a blood clot. What do we do about that? I'm, I'm one of those people on a plane ride, I can't sit still for that long, so I'm, I'm gonna uh, at least move my legs, maybe get up and walk back and forth or something. Is, is that a good idea? Well, that is an excellent idea. Uh, there's a couple more things. First, you have to travel very comfortable. Try to, don't use tight clothes, no belts, you know, try to be very, very comfortable. Second thing, try to avoid alcohol and caffeine during your trip because that can make you dehydrate. And also, every 30 minutes or every hour, you can stand up and you know, walk a little bit uh, in, the, in the plane. Sometimes, I know if you go in economic <laughs> class, you know, that's gonna be a little bit more difficult. Standing up is difficult, yeah, right. But you can make exercises with your heel and your toes, you know, up and down, up and down, every 30 minutes, every 20 minutes, and that also can help. Let me remind our viewers, if you have a question about deep vein thrombosis, how to prevent it, how to treat it, give us a call. We'll have the number up on the screen. So uh, let's talk about symptoms. How, how does somebody know when this is going on? Well, uh, what are the symptoms when you have in your legs? Usually you can have swelling of the leg, you can have pain, changing color of the legs. You know, that, but usually it happens when you don't have any other reason why to have those symptoms. Because if you hit your leg or something, maybe it could be secondary to trauma, but if you have no reasons, you know, maybe you have to think to go to the doctor. Is, is that an emergency by itself? How quickly do you need to get to the doctor? Well, it is an emergency. You need to go to the emergency room or to your office doctor, and they can make a diagnosis and treat you. Now, the, the other sites for a thrombosis, if it's the, uh, you talked about uh, the renal system, the, the arms, mm -hmm. symptoms is obvious? Well, uh, usually are the same symptoms, but those are less common and more associated with, let's say, in the upper arms. Usually we see that in the patients that are in the hospital with catheters, you know, in the arms. Uh, the renal is something more uh, rare that we, we still see, also the brain, but those are diagnosed usually in the hospital. Now, treatment options, uh, anticoagulants, where, where, where do you start? Well, uh, first you start with a diagnosis. You know, when you make a diagnosis, you have to see what is the risk of this patient and how bad the DVT is. Uh, anticoagulants are the main treatment of this, uh, but there are other options too. Uh, we have some medicines that's called thrombolytics that basically gonna destroy the blood clot 
uh, you can give even systemic thrombolytics or you can deliver thrombolytics directly to the, to the blood clot and destroy that. Uh, and in some extreme situations, we can even open and take the blood clot out by surgery. Is there a risk, is there an enhanced risk, uh, if the blood clot is sitting there, but if it breaks loose, we didn't talk about where it goes to, uh, to, to be a potentially fatal situation, but uh, lungs, heart, brain. Yes. Um, uh, when you, we can answer that, but when, when you start treating it, if, mm -hmm. you, if you add in some of these medications, do you risk mobilizing it and, and causing damage? Well, usually when you start treatment, what you do is stabilize the blood clot. And uh, uh, if you, you know, treat the patient one, two, or three days, the risk of emboli embolism decrease. Uh, basically, that is what the treatment do. But if at some time the, the, the blood clot travels already to the lungs, let's say, and if is the patient in a critical condition, uh, then, then is when we use the thrombolytics. Let's grab a phone call. Anne Arundel County, this is Jack. Uh, Jack, thank you for calling. Go ahead. Um, does taking aspirin help prevent blood clots? And what are some other methods that one might try, other things that one could drink or take? Jack, thank you very much. Thoughts on a little bit of aspirin? Well, a little bit of aspirin usually does not prevent blood clots. You know, that is used for different things, for uh, coronary artery disease. Uh, usually what works for preventing blood clots is what we say about exercise and all that. Squeeze in one more. Loudoun County, this is Julie. Uh, Julie, thanks for the call. Go ahead. Yes. Um, I'm wondering, are there are certain full foods that people should avoid, for example, sodium? And also, um, what about people that are diabetic and okay. they're taking a long trip, say, to Australia? Great questions. Julie, thank you so much. Well, you know, uh, all these uh, beverages that have sodium and everything, that can make you retain fluids, you know, and maybe you can confuse that with a swelling for a DVT. But uh, usually, unless that is something that keep, makes you dehydrated, you know, uh, we, we usually don't increase your risk of, uh, in, for DVT during a long trip. And about diabetics, uh, diabetic itself is not a risk factor for DVT. However, most of the patients that has diabetes, diabetes uh, is older people, you know, that has other risk factors combined with the diabetes, and that is when the risk increased. Very good, Dr. Rafael Ceres Drouet, University of Maryland and the University of Maryland Medical Center. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Your health segments are a co-production of Maryland Public Television and the University of Maryland Medical System.